I think the marketeers of today should not aim to get the the next Cannes award. I don't agree. A lot of us are also living in a bubble, right? People will take it uh, in a you know yeah. bad way. And this is a controversial thing to say. What the hell? What did this happen? Welcome to the Empowered Marketer. In this show, we'll talk to people who have created brands, worked with brands, or people who have been part of the larger marketing ecosystem. We will talk about their experiences of marketing strategies, creative ideas, or any growth hacks which has helped them in building brands. This show will help founders, marketers, students, or anyone who wants to build their career in marketing ecosystem. So grab your tea, coffee, whatever you like, and we'll ensure this show is worthwhile for you. Welcome to the Empowered Marketer. Today I have a very special guest who has seen the journey of digital advertising from contributing almost 10-15% to the overall advertising market to today leading it at almost 45% plus market share. Digital advertising has grown a lot and this person has been in the middle of the this growth. He has worked with some of the global giants like City, Meta, Google, Snap, and now heads business at ShareChat. I welcome Gaurav to this show. Thank you, Mukesh. Hi, Gaurav. Gaurav. Uh, in this show, we largely talk about experiences around marketing, branding, and help our audience in building brands. Lovely. So Lovely. we'll keep it very, very organic, very simple for our audience. Uh, and I thank you so much to be on this show. No worries, Mukesh. And um, I've known you for a while. Uh, and needless to say, your contribution uh, to push the digital agenda in the country has been nothing uh, short of phenomenal. So yes, uh, feeling great on this uh, lovely day in Bangalore uh, to be sitting uh, great. with you and the team. Yes. Uh, let's get into it. Yes, absolutely. So as I mentioned, you've worked with global giants, you know, City, Meta, Google, Snap, and now ShareChat. Share some journey of yours. How has this, uh, how has your experience evolved? Uh, how did you land it up at these places? Sure, sure. Um, so... Uh, I'll go back in time, uh, maybe some of it is a, a bit older for, for our audience also, right? But uh, but maybe it gives some context, right? Because uh, uh, like everyone, I've also evolved, learned through my journeys. Uh, luck has played a fair share in my journey, uh, in my career, in my personal life. Uh, I started uh, my career as a as a reluctant software engineer in a in a small company then called NVIDIA. Okay. And, uh, oh, wow. <laughs> That's not a... Oh, maybe <laughs> well, small it was time. relatively small at that point. Um, so I was, like I said, a reluctant software engineer uh, making my way around um, how to write uh, device drivers for uh, NVIDIA's GPUs. At that point, GPUs were used primarily for... Uh, you know, gaming uh, yeah. uh, purposes, but uh, today we know what it has grown to, right? I uh, did that for about a year, um, went on to do my... Um, and this was in India? This was in India. Um, okay. This was a small development center uh, in Pune. Okay. Um, again, small then, I'm sure it has grown by leaps and bounds now. Uh, I have some of my very dear friends even today who've who worked with me, you know, uh, during that time. Uh, then went on to do my uh, management studies, two years in Delhi. Um, and then ended up being a, a trader and a banker for about three and a half to four years. Um, worked with Citibank, also with the prop trading firms. I think, again, the years were very dear to me. I still take those learnings um, with me today because uh, my understanding of how the financial markets work uh, what impact can it have on industries uh, wide across, right? Uh, okay. Be it financial services or be it, in fact, uh, marketing, digital marketing, or how mm. companies choose to spend their money. I think a lot of it is derived from um, the financial policies that are made the world over. Uh, did that for about a few years and then came the big leap uh, of, of joining the internet world. Um, I was lucky enough to be... Uh, to join a fabulous company called Google um, back in 2013. Um, and at that point, Google was in its early days sort of 
more or less setting up the sales team in India. Okay. Um, and I happened to to join literally the rocket ship, uh, as is the the most commonly used word now. Um, did that for about five years. Um, wow. And I would still say that that company remains my. Uh, I would still credit that company for uh, making, giving me the flexibility, the independence, the international exposure yeah. to actually understand not only how internet works, but how consumers on internet behave and decide and do business. Yeah. Um, I used to run their uh, a part of their Asia business. Uh, so luckily ended up traveling to a lot of countries, uh, meeting a lot of people and also getting some insights into while while internet has made the world a flat place, yeah. um, but the way people behave uh, online, uh, how they consume online, how they transact online, how agencies, uh, you know, in different parts of Asia work, uh, that still changes and th that is very cultural, right? Yeah. Um, five years into that, um, I then joined Meta. Uh, it was called Facebook back then. Correct. Uh, and at that point, Meta was... In a way, setting up their uh, business teams in India, um, and a bunch of us joined together to say, how can we really push the business agenda for Facebook in the country? Uh, did that for about four years, uh, ran their mid-market business, um, got a lot of learnings from how um, e-commerce or digital natives yeah. or, or D2C brands uh, leverage social media to actually achieve their business results. Um, Four years later, about three and a half to four years later, um, was approached by someone from Snap, um, and I ended up running their emerging Asia business uh, for a brief while, actually. Um, and Snap again is is a very very cool, very uh, very creative, very yeah. uh, very kind uh, company, if I may say so. Right. Uh, in fact, some of the values, if I remember the company and the Evan Spiegel, their founder, always used to re-emphasize that that you know. Uh, Kindness is is this probably the smartest thing to do, right? In yeah. today's world. Yeah. Um, so did that for about a year, and then today I'm uh, happily running uh, ShareChat and Moj as their chief business officer, responsible for their uh, entire ads mandate, uh, partnerships, marketing, um, and yeah, uh, enjoying the ride. Um, it's uh, it's a full spectrum, like you said. I've come all the way. Um, uh, and hopefully have contributed a bit uh, to how you know the country has come a big way um, in in how we think about uh, monetization on the internet or Correct. or you know all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that has been a very very difficult aspect. In so you were in Google when you know one of the uh, key milestone in our lifetime, which has happened, is launch of Geo, hmm. and uh, and you would have seen how the digital ecosystem totally transformed. Hmm. Share some experience of pre Geo, post Geo. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean that's a, a big pivotal moment for India. There is no denying that, right? And Mukesh, I distinctly remember um, there was almost a celebration in the office, like. Uh, you know that, and I think Geo uh, Geo launch was also postponed, if I remember, a couple of times, yeah, right? Like yes. it was supposed to launch <laughs> on a date, and then it was moved by six months. So there was all it was almost with bated uh, breath that all of us, because we were part of the industry, right? We knew what it could do to the internet consumption in India when something of that scale launches. Okay. Um, Pre and post Geo, I distinctly remember that the watch times on some of the internet properties would zoom up, right? Yes. Uh, I mean, zoom is not a not the word. right word. <laughs> yeah, it just went through the roof. Um, it, I remember, you know, some statistics on YouTube one month pre and one month post this. They were just bonkers, right? Uh, but coming from a pure monetization standpoint, I also remember distinctly that because the watch time suddenly goes up, right? And in a in a fair auction model, I'm sure a lot of our audience know that a lot of digital marketing actually is run through a fair auction, which is essentially demand and supply. Correct. So suddenly, if your supply of inventory goes up drastically, that puts a downward pressure on on CPMs, right? And we, as you know, sales team, of course, struggled with that for a couple of quarters because suddenly, you know, this this was this had fallen uh, off a cliff. Uh, but we knew overall that it is 
in the end it will stabilize it will stabilize and it is for the for uh, for the best of the ecosystem so yeah that so is you saw that huge jump yeah yeah, yeah. for our audience if you could uh, you know explain cpm oh yes yes absolutely so uh, cpm um, i think comes from some latin i i, I assume cost per mile yes. or something uh, it's latin english latin mile english i think millennial or something uh, which essentially means translates into thousand so it is cost per thousand impressions uh, so let's say you know uh you want to show your ad on youtube yeah. uh, typically there is a price that is derived through by auction Got it. Uh, but it is the 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 most common currency that is used globally is cpm, CPM. which is if if you're able to show your ad for a thousand times thousand yeah. impressions how much are you charged Got so yeah. it. thank you uh you know one milestone is this another one you were at meta mm-hmm. uh, and and you were handling mid market mm-hmm. uh i remember you know in this time even mid market adoption of digital advertising was growing at a supersonic speed yeah uh, can you help us in uh, distilling what mid market is sure. uh, what what part of digital advertising were they starting to use and how did it happen sure sure uh, and mukesh uh, mid market is is sort of a fluid term right because all companies will have their own definitions uh, interestingly no business <coughs> is also liked to be Like nobody likes to be called a mid-market business, right? Everyone yeah. wants to be called yeah, yeah. a large. People business. will take it, uh, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. bad way if you yeah. go and tell somebody you're a mid-market, you're a large guy, you're a small guy. <laughs> yeah, similarly with SMB, right? Yeah. I mean, so anyways, so these are <coughs> these are more inward-looking definitions, but broadly, what it means is that uh, most publishers today, uh, for the longest time now, approach their monetization teams. through sort of three broad buckets uh, the largest and the biggest bucket is what is typically called a team which approaches the large corporates um, and most of these sales teams are typically verticalized which means you would end up hiring let's say people who are experienced in an e-commerce industry get them on your site so Got that it. they can do those conversations uh, with their counterparts you know tell them what makes sense for them so it is more deeper conversations uh, possibly sometimes even going to a pnl level because Got that it. is what how, how you're trying to influence their marketing spends so that is the large uh, large enterprise team Got or a corporate it. team whatever you may call it then typically there is a mid market team uh, that most publishers have uh, these are more horizontal teams uh, saying that hey we know how digital marketing works and can i help you grow your business in that and the third and the obvious bucket is you know again depending on what you choose to call it uh, it may be called a smb team it may yeah. be called a long tail etc etc uh mid market was very very interesting uh, it was also again the time um, when india was seeing this crazy growth of digital natives um, or uh, a lot of d2c brands coming yeah. into the into india um, a lot of venture capital fueling this growth and the advertising spends right uh, so again luckily i was i was uh, glad to be it was it was actually very very fortunate for me to be part of that journey um, and what i learned is that prior to that i didn't actually imagine how social media can be important to businesses i mean we all know yeah. and uh, and we all crib sometimes uh, that you know hey i ended up consuming too much of a uh, short form video yeah. last night or hey my son is now 14 and he is yeah. he spending time on this platform um but before that stint of mine i didn't realize how important can social media be for businesses right and it is because uh, you know people do spend time there is no yeah. going away from that um, and with the world class algorithms that have been built by these companies right uh, the power to reach out your audience uh, and then retarget them uh, with the right creative uh, with the right messaging leading to most efficient business results i think that is just nothing short of magical correct um i mean i'm sure all of us have been in part of those conversations over a drink yeah. uh wherein the joke is that is someone hearing from yeah, my phone absolutely. because hey you know i was talking about this and this ad suddenly showed up uh i think there is no one listening to our <laughs> conversations right it is it is the i don't agree <laughs> maybe like, how can it be like we are talking about thailand and the ad pops up <laughs> yeah i'll tell you so okay let's take the thailand example right i think what usually happens is that if a bunch of friends end up talking about a destination um, one of us ends up actually either searching for it 
uh, either on a Google or on a social media, etc. And the algos just get triggered and they are built in a way uh, that they have the ability to target the right person at the right time. Okay. Um, and that is that is what i think is actually driving this near as as apple i think a lot of i think a lot of apple technology is called auto magical or something of that okay. sort so i think it's the beauty and the power of the algorithms just being right every time right okay. and maybe that develops a perception uh, so it and this is my own personal view um, so let's say you search for it and we are a look alike and yeah. i also get started getting it because because the algorithms know right yeah. like mukesh and gaurav are connected on instagram yeah. and you know our uh, <laughs> you know our our content consumption is similar and there is some way or the other that that this happens right uh, so again a, a, it, no, no. it's yeah. it's it's yeah. all out there it's uh, the ju- the jury is out there uh, but i think coming back to the mid market experience i think uh, what i clearly learned is the power of algorithms uh, leading to efficient gains for the marketers i think that was a, a genuine revelation for me yeah. i mean i'd worked for google for 5 years i knew how how these things work but i think these are much more exaggerated in a social media setup um because how quickly can you um come back to gorav with the white shirt i browsed yesterday uh i think just that um that increases my tendency to purchase that giving the maximum return for the market here so i think that was a great journey um, again luckily because uh, india was going through its whole boom of uh, a lot of yeah um and then the other thing i i did uh, take away from my mid market experience was uh, because of the definition of the vertical called mid market i ended up getting exposed to a lot of different business types absolutely uh, so some of them were d2c brands selling <laughs> let's say fashion and apparel yeah. uh, some of them ended up being real estate companies uh, some of them ended up being um, media entertainment a jewelry a company traditional company starting off online exactly. business so and then just talking to the founders or their chief marketing officers uh, to know and understand their problems and hopefully give a solution to that i think that was personally very uh, exciting and challenging for me interesting you mentioned the uh, short video format yeah. i remember you know during 29 1819 i and there was a boom of tiktok in india hmm. uh and everybody was just talking tiktok tiktok and i happened to you know go uh, home one of the evenings and i said let me try a tiktok mm-hmm. i downloaded tiktok and in no time yeah i spent 60 minutes on tiktok mm. and i was like what the hell what did this happen <laughs> yeah and uh, the beautiful part for me was i was able to discover some of the cool punjabi songs yeah. which i otherwise wouldn't be able to discover on a spotify or a youtube or anywhere because they were really unheard of yeah and i don't know how those content creators started using it and yeah. they were on tiktok and and the kind of content they were making and mm. the whole delivery of it was seamless yeah. i was like wow <laughs> and i actually deleted it <laughs> because i don't want to spend so much of time on my mobile phone <laughs> but that was my that was the introduction of short video format yeah. to me and i remember it was a wildfire yeah. people were all over the place on short video formats help yeah. us understand how did it happen mm-hmm. how did the origination of the whole short video format took place sure sure i can i mean i'm almost laughing because i mean some of these things are so good that you are you are almost skeptical of using them more <laughs> right so yeah and I, i'm in the same boat right uh, crazy crazy so my my two cents on this of course uh, you know there are um, much sharper and aware people who could tell give you a better answer um, i think what happened with a uh, a desktop moving to a laptop form factor to then of course the iphone release and the smartphone boom uh we now have a super computer equivalent in our hands right yeah. which is also affordable which means uh, you know almost the entire world can use it if not entirely uh and due to that the attention span of human beings all of us uh, keeps on decreasing yeah. right um and then this great company bydance yeah comes up with this uh, short video uh, not only format i think the power behind this again is is uh, the whole ai 
uh, you know today we yeah. we of course ai there can't be a podcast without without the, yeah yeah it's the best word <laughs> so uh, <laughs> but the the sheer power of recommendation system recommending you the next best video i think that changed the world forever no right? doubt about it um, and like you said the experience is very uh, very common um, it is no longer the social graph um metrics deciding what gorav wants to consume next so if gorav and mukesh are friends back in the day a social graph algorithm social social graph based algorithms would tell you yeah. that because mukesh consumes this uh, probably gorav also likes that and they're uh, right that's yeah. what you used some time back that yeah. they're almost right all the time yeah yeah and that was how i mean um, uh, even a facebook blue app and and instagram all used to work they they also by the way have made a drastic change to this to this uh, you know an, uh, a drastic change in the way how how content is recommended to all of us and it was pioneered of course i think by 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 dance uh, with their world class algorithms right and mukesh i also think that the today's internet user right the new to internet user of today is also uh, is not a well connected individual so gone are the days when internet used to be very metro very yeah. male very affluent uh, today <laughs> if the 800th million indian is coming online he or she doesn't have a lot of friends online <laughs> right uh, it's a lonely world for them so to say yeah. online uh, and that is why what algos do or what the recommendation system does is that it looks at the entire um uh, buffet of 100000 videos available basis the location of that person yeah. maybe the the quality of the device the country of course and it starts recommending and you will not believe that <coughs> uh, you know some of these algorithms can actually uh, become sharp within 10 minutes of your consumption right wow. because they quickly uh, you know read what mukesh would be interested in what is he liking uh and there are a lot of inherent signals that we give as consumers of course if you skip a ice cream video quickly the algorithm probably knows that yeah. mukesh is not interested in ice creams uh, <laughs> while a video on a ai if you end up watching a couple of times it is a very strong signal yeah. and along with that there are some explicit signals like a thumbs up or a you know um, i think sharing is a very very strong signal so if you're sharing a video uh to your to your whatsapp group um i think that's a very very strong signal right that yeah. you really really like that exactly um so i think some of these uh, the changes in the way how machines think about how what humans like i think that has brought a fundamental change and it is because of this these recommendation systems we are literally hooked on right because yeah. there is no sort of getting out of this rabbit hole correct if i am today interested in in sachin's i don't know desert storm series videos yeah. it'll keep on showing you, know, you, showing you yeah. some of the ip content some of the user generated content some memes on it some gifs on it um, so i think that is what the power of short form video is um, i think what drastically took away human beings attention from long form is just the attention drop right so what uh, what i used to consume 5 years back in 15 minutes today i can consume the same content in probably a minute yeah. um so the pressure is on the creators to actually make a content which is engaging informative fun background music uh, right lighting right yeah. clothes so it's in all out there very very small yeah because consumer has a choice right correct, they correct. just have a thumb swipe yes uh, and there you go so so i think it is all dependent yeah, on that quite a, a transformation by dance had done it is that. it is yeah uh you know the company now you are part of uh, and moj is part of uh, share chat plus moj uh, started during covid mm-hmm. and at right after the ban of tiktok help us understand why was why did india ban tiktok mm-hmm. how did moj started and why did you think that you were the right people to start moj and what are the initial struggle of sure, doing that sure i'll try to give uh, <laughs> i think uh, all credit to the young founders who who thought of this right so by the way uh, share chat was started in 2015 yeah uh so i remember it was around uh, something like facebook for uh, tier 2 tier 3 audiences yeah in a way <laughs> yes so uh, i think 2015 uh, you know the three founders uh, you know came across a 
product market fit for yeah. an uh, for an app which could um, almost uh, cater to the needs of vernacular Indians uh, who were probably, like I said, not not the uh, not the English speaking metro um, uh, you know audience out there, but a much much larger audience. Yeah. Uh, so ShareChat started in 2015. Um, Moj actually started in. Uh, June or July of 2020, which was exactly okay. after the yeah. TikTok ban. So Moj is relatively newer. It is a four-year-old <laughs> um, app. And ShareChat has been in existence now for a good nine, ten uh, uh, strong years. Uh, to the credit of the founders, I think they've always realized that if you can create something, a product, which resonates with their audience, there is no going back. Yeah. Uh, the audience will keep coming back, right? Uh, like I can tell you, Mukesh, that... Despite tons of these American apps today in uh, globally, right, uh, uh, with their world-class uh, recommendation systems, there is a reason why uh, people keep coming back uh, to ShareChat and Moj on a daily basis and keep spending time. Um, and I think some of those trends would be uh, vernacular content, regional creators, yeah. um, so all this, if you put together, hmm. uh, today, I think we are India's largest short form video ecosystem hmm. um, with 300 million people coming to both our apps on a monthly basis. Uh, we, I think, strongly believe that if you want to build a brand for Indians today, short form videos and specifically uh, Share Chat and Moj are probably the best way you can do. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, you know, I... Today, Moj has stood the ground and still running mm -hmm. fairly well. There were a lot of people who started, or a lot of apps which started right after the ban of TikTok. Yeah. Takata, Roposo, Chingari, many others. Yeah. Uh, a lot of them are struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, they could not uh, do so well. Mm -hmm. What stood out for Moj? Yeah. So I think, Mukesh, it is again very simple, right? It is relatively easier to start something yeah. like... You're a short form video company, et cetera, et cetera, right? And you rightly said, post the TikTok ban, there was suddenly a in oversupply of, yeah. in the market, right? That, you know, hey, we are India's short form video apps. And today, if you look around, uh, Moj is probably the only one which is standing strong. Um, I think a couple of things, right? Razor, fo uh, razor sharp focus on what is it that the users want, yeah. um, right? Um, I think from a very early stage, uh, the company invested in, while AI has become the buzzword now, uh, you know, the, the sheer investment in AI resources by the company to ensure that our recommendation system is the best out there. I think that I would say is the single reason why we still exist and we are actually, we're not surviving, we're thriving, right? Wow. Uh, because unless and until again, you can show your users the next best content, uh, which keeps them hooked on. Um, you're not getting them. They have the option of, of going so elsewhere. many apps on their phones, right? Absolutely. So I think those couple of things uh, clearly stood uh, out. For, stood out, yeah. Amazing. So is it fair for me to say that if a marketer has a problem of reaching out to audience at a regional level, hmm. is then Moj plus Searchart is my platform to go? Absolutely. And not only that, uh, let's say you are a you're a soap brand, right? Yeah. Uh, and you now think that there is a brand extension that you have launched um, at a slightly higher price point because yeah. premiumization <laughs> or or margins is the focus. And you want to do that in 10 markets of the country, right? Yeah. Uh, suddenly, the ShareChat and Moj become a platform which again give you access to differentiated audience and differentiated creators. Got it. And unless and until you are able to solve this for a marketeer at scale, uh, their life isn't becoming easy, right? It's a tough job being a, being a marketeer today. Yeah. I mean, we've all, uh, the consumers are constantly evolving, the surfaces are constantly evolving, uh, there are more and more uh, publishers out there, Correct, there yeah. are news channels, you it's know. It's so, a problem of plenty actually. It's a problem of plenty. So how do you make sure that you know, every bank for the buck is realized when you are partnering with, uh, you know, a large platform yeah. like us. I think that is what 
you know we end up doing uh coming back to the question of you know using uh, short video formats for success of campaigns or driving maximum value of your penny uh how can marketers you know because today a short video is all about you know shorter attention span bite size content how do they make content which is memorable which has large impact uh and how can they strategize around yeah. these uh complications or limitations so to say yeah yeah and so like they say right it is a million dollar question uh i don't have the entire answer but here's what i think right uh because users are so used to uh engaging fun short video formats uh your brand communication also has to be that way um so if you're i'm not a big fan honestly of of the 5 minute ad ad cards uh, you know sure they are emotional storytelling we all love to yeah uh, you know consume them once in a while they may end up winning some awards but yeah. uh, are they actually resonating with the audience is it getting you the business results i'm not so sure so um, i mean my advice would be make it shorter make it vertical um, make it vernacular uh, please do not transliterate or dub because it is almost offensive to someone who is yeah. consuming right because they can make out of course they can um make that effort of making different creatives which are not transliterated uh for your different cohort of audience because if you respect the audience they will respect you back they will consume your product buy your product or service um make it very fun engaging compelling uh, in fact a lot of uh, you know agencies out there you know like the media and also uh they actually advise their clients on some of these things right yeah. because um you know a lot of these things keep changing every year yeah. every 6 months or so correct uh so some of these tips and tricks uh but the but the overall mantra is if you can resonate and speak the language and the surface of your customer i think that's yeah please uh, keep it simple yeah uh, be high on relevancy to yeah. your audience yeah uh any successful campaigns you would like to talk about which has really done done well on sure. moj and chat chat yeah 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 absolutely i mean um there are because we now actively <laughs> work with always on campaigns for you know the country's largest fmcg com- uh, company the the country's largest beverage brands yeah. um the only reason they agree to something like an always on is because they see real value uh, in short form videos right um let's say a a, a moisturizing cream right yeah. uh, they would end up doing uh, something like a, a influencer uh, campaign or a or a hashtag challenge right um, so i think some of these have become very very powerful yeah. so i think we didn't talk enough about the influencer marketing correct which in short form videos is is becoming more and more prominent so here is what it means right one of the classic ways is that d- during a short form video consumption you end up showing a short edit of your ad which is you know vertical fun yeah. vernacular regional but what if you introduce a quirky challenge to say hey this is what i can do this is how i hold up a bottle this is how i play with the lens on yeah. my phone um uh, using regional creators i think that becomes very powerful and a does lot it of work? it does it absolutely does i mean for all um all the possible metrics that we can measure on mukesh be it the uh, a brand lift yeah. or the actual sales uh, that a brand would see post doing that campaign i think all those metrics absolutely stack up okay uh, there is no reason for us to now have any doubt that influencer marketing uh, combined with some quirky challenge in a vernacular uh, language uh, using local influencers that absolutely absolutely has a long term impact 
on your brand building. Uh, which sort of brands or categories really work a lot on short video format? In terms of brands, I would say they're getting maximum value from it. Sure. You did mention FMCG. Yes. Uh, some of the consuming brands. Otherwise. Yeah. yeah. So, I think it's quite broad. Yeah. I would say, I mean, FMCG becomes a no-brainer uh, because of the sheer... Uh, reach requirement also they have, yeah. right? I mean, they're trying to sell their product to 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 probably a tier four a rural area also. Um, I think handsets is a big category. Okay. Um, you know, we all know India is a is a is a very large smartphone market. Yeah. Um, so that would also mean electronics has la at large. Probably. Yes. Also electronics at large. Just that smartphones become a major, major. chunk of electronics, Got right? It. Uh, so I think that works very well. So if you are doing a handset launch, Got it. Uh, you know, utilizing, uh, you know, an impact buy on a short form video can be very powerful. Uh, then the entire, uh, you know, uh, media and entertainment vertical. So if you are an OTT player out there. A new show coming a up. A new show coming up. You want to tell uh, your existing Got and it. your newer prospective audience that, hey, this is coming up. Gaming, I think, is very powerful. While the industry has had its uh, challenges over the past one year. Um, and they have, I think, kudos to them. They've yeah. they've, uh, they've actually uh, revived almost from that. Um, gaming is very powerful in short form video, right? So yeah. whether you want to... Uh, get an install or you want to get a deposit or you want to reach out to your existing customers. In fact, a lot of utility um, uh, apps, Mukesh, work very well on short form videos. Interesting. Uh, so for example, Canva, an international company, yeah. they've been working with us for about, I think, now about two years or so. Wow. And they've had recently some some change in uh, some plan post the AI, yeah. the Canva Pro or something. Uh, but imagine them reaching out to millions of Indians at scale yeah. via a short form video um, and telling them that, hey, this is a free to use and an easy to use app in which you can do a lot of things, right? Yeah. And remember the the boundaries between, today the boundary between a creator and a user of a short form video is also blurring. Absolutely. So I may be a consumer of short form video during the day <laughs> And I and know. at in the evening, late night, I may end up posting something also, right? Yeah. And because that uh, that bound those boundaries are blurring, uh, it is also interesting for companies like like Canva to approach people Absolutely. because you never know that you know Mukesh is also a creator, yes, and he may be interested in such a Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Uh, so true. I think yeah, it's it's quite broad based. Interesting. You know. For me, my journey on social media has been from Orkut to Facebook mm -hmm. to Instagram <laughs> to now short video formats. If you can do some crystal gazing, where do you think uh, we will go from here? <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I don't know. Um, I broadly I think that um, a of course many more Indians and many more people in the world will start consuming internet. I think most parts of the world have exhausted uh, their 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 internet reach. But I think countries like India, Africa, uh, you know, coming in, more affordable smartphones coming in, I think we should see, uh, if I'm not wrong, I, I, about they estimate about 4 billion people out of 8 yeah. consume internet today. Um uh, hopefully, you know, we all can work to make technology affordable to the other 4 billion also because there is no use of technology unless it benefits every human on earth, right? Correct. So I think, so number one, many more people will start consuming the internet. Uh, number two, on people who are already consuming, right? I think the, the division of time spent will only increase. Uh, because the only thing that is constant is 24 hours a day. Yeah, that's um, not changing. Yeah, that's not changing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it shouldn't. And uh, for a, for a, as they say, digital well-being, uh, you know, X hours a day yeah. is what your consumption should be, right? And that will be split, right? I want to consume an OTT. I want to consume a short form video. I want to get some information. I want to connect with my friends. So I think increasingly, let's say five years, 10 years, the time spent distribution that we see today skewed towards a few companies or players, I think that will be more... Um, distributed, you more would say. distributed. Okay. Uh, because the consumers will also evolve. Um, 
so that's that's number two uh number three what i think is that uh, we as humans will also start doing a lot more things on our smartphones than we do today or we did 15 years back right for example 10 years back chances are you and i both had smartphones but were we weren't probably booking cabs from yeah. our smartphone right yeah um and a lot of those things today you book a, a airbnb yeah. or a or even an experience right a, yeah. a, a pub crawl tour or yeah. something on your smartphone i think uh, so humans will start doing a lot more things on smartphones 10 years later because the technology will be just more simpler yeah like while payments have for, has for example come a long way but i still think there are enough friction points for maybe my my uh, Uh, my mother to use it yeah uh, but if that is taken away uh, and made secure at the same time yeah um, and that is why i fundamentally believe if you put these three things together uh, the internet economy is just going to boom uh, because you will have a more people yeah absolutely uh, b uh, consuming variety of variety of things and yeah. c uh also comfortable uh, doing a lot of things that they do offline today so even more time spent on mobile phone is what you're saying i don't know i i think maybe. we yeah maybe what's I, your time spent <laughs> mine is uh two and a half hours yeah it's almost embarrassing uh, actually i i've i've become much better with my digital well being so okay. it's almost uh you know whenever i'm with my son at home you know i yes. keep it away yeah the phone is like yeah. in a separate room and i may miss a yeah. few calls in there but uh so i think on an average weekly i would be spending because remember phone is also phone also becomes your work device absolutely because there are these pings and slacks yeah, and I whatsapp know. messages so what i do is uh, there are few days in a week where even in the day time in my mm. work time i switch off my uh, you know mobile internet or wifi yeah and yeah. that really helps me in bringing it down yeah no that's a smart one but i i think i should be averaging around 14 15 hours a week okay but i'll be much worse on weekdays than on weekends because okay. weekend so you are very skewed consumption yeah it is very days. skewed usually weekends is like it's it's kept somewhere nice. uh, that's not bad actually that's pretty good yeah yeah, yeah i think nice. so <laughs> <laughs> uh last one what's your all time favorite ad all time and why wow that's a very very difficult one i'm actually a um, i love cinema um, and and i think great ads are somewhere on that spectrum right it's yeah. a, it's a very mini micro whatever <laughs> uh, storytelling yeah um and thinking hard uh, no problems I mean some of those classic ones one can't forget right and I mean not that I was exposed to them when I was I mean I was born mm. and brought up in India um but the f- the very famous um, apple ad right um, which features uh, you know Albert Einstein and uh, and and I think Gandhi and yeah, yeah uh, absolutely uh, this yeah I imagine showed it when uh, Steve Jobs showed it right yes it was quite a uh, yeah yeah it 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 actually yeah it gives me goosebumps uh, it's i think imagine campaign or something correct, correct, so correct. i think again i wasn't exposed to it when when it was launched but it still um, is a is a great one right yeah. it, um also closer back home um you know as a as a 90s kid uh, you know if if some of us can still remember uh, hamara bajaj yeah. or uh, you know the the happy dent yeah. the the whitening yeah. teeth and, and the musical of airtel i don't know uh, if you yeah, like yeah, it yeah 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 musical of airtel or the 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 vodafone you know the whole the thing, pug the, ones? the pug thing yeah. so the sheer fact that some of us can remember uh, these campaigns after decades uh speaks volumes yeah, right yeah, i do also think that, and this is this is a point i was telling someone right that i think the marketer of today because the audience has become so aware so nuanced it is no longer urban no longer male no longer english speaking and this is a controversial thing to say i think the marketers of today should not aim to get the the next cans award that is not yeah. what a marketer's aim is the aim is to get to your next prospective customer correct 
Absolutely. So, while I love the Apple ad we were talking about, uh, it is still the tonality and the uh, and it wo- it may have worked for them that time, right? Actually, it tanked, by the way. It did. Yeah, yeah, it didn't work so well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, uh, you know, it was you know uh, a whole out of box thinking yeah. and all of that. But I don't think that the ad worked. So yeah. Much. So if the consumers didn't resonate, <coughs> if it didn't lead to the I don't know max sales or yeah. whatever they were chasing that time. Uh, so yeah, absolutely right. I so think it's staying true to the objective. Yeah. Uh, will give you results. Sales. Yeah. Or at times awards. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, awards are good. We we all love them. Yeah. Uh, but I think a great marketer shouldn't aim for an award, but the next sale, the next business results, which may not be fancy, which may not be talk spoken about yeah. in in a podcast, or you know, people may not give you thumbs up and claps on it because we're a lot of us are also living in a bubble, right? So this is the top X percent of the country, yeah. and we end up appreciating things which are probably more nuance to us correct uh, that's how we will differentiate ourselves yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but not necessarily to the to the 50 50th crore indian you are trying to correct. so Absolutely. i think that's yeah yeah great thank you so much gaurav it was such a lovely to have chat with you yeah no same uh, here learned a lot thank you so much oh, no so did i and thank you for having me you have a lovely team uh, and kudos to them also and uh, yeah i had a great time thank you lovely okay bye great